now coming to the diphtheria proper so in the diphtherial uh, pharyngitis uh, which is uh, also referred to as the fossil diphtheria we have to know about the causative organism which is the corin bacterium diphtheri which is the corin bacterium diphtheri now the mechanism of transmission of this corin bacterium diphtheri uh, is the droplets the aerosols and the secretions this is for just general knowledge sometimes examiners in viva may ask you about the mode of transmission of the diphtherial infection or the uh, fossil diphtheria so you uh, should know this it is good to know now next uh, about the corin bacterium diphtheri we have to know about the virulence factor of the corin bacterium diphtheri we have talked that the कोरिन बैक्टीरियम डिप्थेरी जो है वो ऐसे ही बदनाम है उसका मेन काम जो है वो डिप्थेरिया टॉक्सिन करता है बैक्टीरिया का कोई आ, काम नहीं होता उसमें मतलब कि जो भी सिम्टम्स आते हैं दैट इज कॉज्ड बाय द डिप्थेरिया टॉक्सिन ओनली नॉट बाय द कोरिन बैक्टीरियम डिप्थेरी बैक्टीरिया सो द वायरस फैक्टर्स विल आल्सो बी द डिप्थेरिया टॉक्सिन बिकॉज़ दैट इज कॉजिंग ऑल द सिम्टम्स एंड साइंस so uh, if we dissociate this diphtheria toxin okay so we will get that uh, the diphtheria toxin is made up of two fragments that is fragment b and fragment a and as usual the function of the fragment b is to bind the receptors and help in the entry of fragment a fragment b ka sadiyo se yahi kaam chalta aa raha hai okay that the fragment b will bind to the receptor and help in the entry of the fragment a this was true in cholera as also and here also now uh, talking about the fragment a so this fragment a causes the adp ribosylation causes adp ribosylation of the elongation factor 2 yahan par so here uh, both of these are the potential mcq questions uh, Uh, like what is done by the fragment a to which factor so you need to uh, know that the adp ribosylation of the elongation factor 2 is done uh, what happens after that so as there is adp ribosylation on the elongation factor 2 there is inhibition of that elongation factor 2 that causes decrease in the protein synthesis and when the protein synthesis decreases there occurs the symptoms to the patient like those pseudo membrane formation bleeding uh, extension etc etc okay those all type of symptoms will start occurring to the patient so this is all about the virulence factor which was the diphtheria toxin now one uh, very important uh, note here uh, is to know about the A role of iron in the diphtheria toxin production. So this diphtheria toxin production is regulated by the iron concentration in the body. By the iron concentration in the body. So this is a, a mineral which is helping in the production of the diphtheria toxin. This may be asked as MCQ. So I have included uh, it here in my slide or uh, page, whatever you may call it. so now coming to the pathogenesis of the diphtheria toxin now this pathogenesis becomes a important question for the university exams so please hear it with uh, immense you know uh, attention that the pathogenesis of the diphtheria toxin that depends upon the diphtheria toxin production the pathogenesis depends upon the diphtheria toxin production so corin bacterium diphtheria does not enter it to the blood as i have talked earlier that the corin bacterium does not causes any thing it just produces the it just produces the diphtheria toxin and all thing is done by that toxin only so the toxin enters into the blood and uh, there occurs the toxemia but mind that bacteremia never occurs only toxemia occurs so when the toxin enters there occurs toxemia and then the toxin causes uh, as we have discussed uh, earlier also that there is fragment a fragment b how does fragment a acts and produces this type of clinical features so
first uh, just uh, we will just read about these clinical features which are caused by the fragment a of the diphtheria toxin so those are that there will be sore throat and foul breath plus there will be grayish white membrane formation over the tonsil also called as pseudo membrane plus there will be bleeding on removal if someone uh, tries to remove that uh, you know membrane that pseudo membrane from from the tonsil then underneath the membrane there will be bleeding so that bleeding if occurs underneath the pseudo membrane that uh, indicates towards the fossil diphtheria with uh, very high severity so uh, that bleeding or removal is a very important clinical feature that we see in case of the uh, fossil diphtheria plus there may be a strider why why will there be strider strider will be because the pseudo membrane is extending up to the larynx so there will be narrowing of the larynx leading to a strider uh, in the sound plus there may be bull neck also why is there bull neck bull neck because the toxin is reaching to the uh, uh, toxin is reaching to the lymph nodes plus uh, a toxin is uh, at the uh, tonsil as well so there will be tonsillar enlargement plus due to enlargement of the lymph nodes there may occur uh, neck enlargement plus uh, you know it will appear like a bull so that's why plus there is edema also due to toxin so uh, considering all of them that appears as a swelling over the neck uh, that appears as if uh, it is the neck of a bull so that's why it is called as the bull neck so these are all the clinical features that we find with the uh, infection of the corymbacterium diphtheria causing the uh, fossil diphtheria okay so this is all about the first part of the corymbacterium diphtheria in the next video we will talk about the lab diagnosis of the corymbacterium diphtheria